Dear children of God, sisters and brothers in the Lord, we wel welcome you all for this worship service. Uh, this worship service comes to you for the 21st of June 2020, 21st of June, Sunday 2020, the third Sunday of the Pentecost. And the theme for this Sunday is worship. Worship and the sub theme is celebration of people's faith. And we praise God for this Sunday and we praise God for this online worship as well. And uh, may God bless all of us by this worship service. For today, I am going to request you to join with me in the litany which we normally do in our church service which is found on page 2, the litany. You know the response. The response is, unto the Lamb be glory, unto the Lamb be glory. Therefore, we are going to join in the litany on page 2 in our prayer book. Worthy is the Lamb that has been slain to receive the power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Unto the Lamb be the glory. Unto Him that sits on the throne and unto the Lamb be the blessing and the honor and the glory and the dominion for ever and ever. Unto the Lamb be glory. Worthy you all, for you were slain and did purchase unto God with your blood people of every tribe and tongue and race and nation. Together we say, unto the Lamb be glory, salvation unto our God who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto God forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, now we are going to confess our sins to God. The theme being worship. Let us confess our sins. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, 
although we are grateful to you for the privilege of worshiping you for the grace of worshiping you we confess that we have been negligent in worship service in attending the worship service in participating in the worship service please forgive us lord on the other hand we have made our worships as a ritual mere ritual we are sorry about that lord and we ask you to forgive us sir. please forgive us lord now we are going to join in the general confession of saints prayer which is found on page 3 in our prayer book together we pray heavenly father we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbor we have walked in darkness rather than in light we have named the name of christ but have not departed from iniquity Have mercy upon us, we beseech thee, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Forgive us all our sins, cleanse us by thy Holy Spirit, quicken our consciences, and enable us to forgive others, that we may henceforth serve thee in newness of life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Hear the gracious word of God to all who truly turn to God through Jesus Christ. Come unto me, all you that labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, and He is the propitiation for all our sins. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who of His great mercy has promised the forgiveness of sins to all who forgive their brothers and sisters. And with hearty repentance and true faith, turn unto Him. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. The collect for the day for the 21st of June 2020, third Sunday after Pentecost. The theme being worship, celebration of people's faith. Let us pray. Holy and Almighty God, seated on the high and lofty throne, illumine our hearts and minds to make truthful confessions, experience your sanctification, and to be guided and led by you in the pilgrimage of life, so that. we may worship you in truth and in spirit and celebrate our faith living each day in the joy of your presence through jesus christ who links and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god now and forever more amen in such uncertain times we surely need jesus more than ever Oh, we need, yes, we need Jesus now more than ever. He healed the blind man, walked on the waters, and he raised up Jairus' daughter. Fed the hungry, cleansed the leper, but we need Jesus' name more than ever. Jesus' name more than ever. We are saved in stormy weather. All His children. Get together for we need Jesus now more than ever. He touched the lame man 
And he started and walked again He touched the dumb man And he started talking He put their lives all back together But we need Jesus now more than ever Jesus now more than ever we are sailing in stormy weather all his children should get together for we need Jesus now more than ever those who are in hospitals, 
health centers taken care of by family members taken care of by doctors nurses and paramedical workers we pray for them lord very specially we pray for those aged senior citizens of our church who are not well amongst us and we pray that your healing hand will be upon them we thank you for doctors nurses all those who are taking care of them lord as we pray for those who are not well we are also continuing we pray for the situation worldwide the covid-19 situation lord we pray that you will take control of the things as you have been doing lord we know that you are sitting on the throne and you are taking control of the situation we pray for the worldwide countries which are mostly affected we pray for pray for india which has come to the third place in the worst affected countries in the worldwide situation lord we are worried and we pray constantly continuously for your saving grace we pray for tamil nadu which is also mostly affected we pray for chennai oh lord our state capital which is worst affected in tamil nadu we pray for our city madurai we pray for our people very specially those who are taking care of the things government officials police officials health officials doctors nurses paramedical workers very specially sanitary workers we pray for them lord please bring us out of this situation because we believe you we trust in you lord because we pray in jesus name amen the old testament reading is taken from isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 to 8 in the year that king uzziah died i saw the lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and the train of his robe filled the temple above him stood the seraphim each had six wings with two he covered his face and with two he covered his feet and with two he flew and one called to another and said holy 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 is the lord of hosts the whole earth is full of his glory and the foundation of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called and the house was filled with smoke and i said woe is me for i, I am lost for i am a man of unclean lips and i dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips for my eyes have seen the king the lord of hosts then one of the seraphims flew to me having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar and he touched me touched my mouth and said behold this has touched your lips your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for and i heard the voice of the lord saying whom shall i send and who will go for us then i said here i am send me here ends the reading thanks be to thee o christ The second reading is taken from Revelation chapter 4 verses 1 to 11 The throne in heaven After this I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven and the first voice which I had heard speaking to me like a trumpet said Come up here and I will show you what must take place after this At once I was in the spirit and behold a throne stood in heaven with one seated on the throne and he who sat there had the appearance of jasper and carnelian 
and around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald. Around the throne were twenty-four thrones and seated on the thrones were twenty-four elders clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their head. From the throne came flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder and before the throne were burning seven torches of fire which was the seven spirits of God and before the throne there was at it were a sea of glass like crystal and around the throne on each side of the throne are four living creatures full of eyes in front and behind the first living creature like a lion the second living creature like an ox the third living creature with the face of a man and the fourth living creature like an eagle in flight and the four living creatures each of them with six wings are full of eyes all around and within and day and night they never cease to say holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was and is and is to come and whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who is seated on the throne who lives forever and ever the 24 elders fall down before him who is seated on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever they cast their crowns before the throne saying worthy are you our lord and god to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they existed and were created here ends the new testament reading praise be to thee o christ the gospel reading is taken from john chapter 4 verses 16 to 26 he told her go call your husband and come back i have no husband she replied jesus said to her you are right when you say you have no husband the fact is you've had five husbands and the man you have now is not your husband what you have just said is quite true sir the woman said i can see that you are a prophet our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Woman, rep replied Jesus, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you don't know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has come now when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah called Jesus is coming when he comes he will explain everything to us then Jesus declared I the one speaking to you I am he here ends the gospel reading praise be to thee O Christ the children of God now we are going to the meditation or the message for uh, this Sunday, this uh, Sunday's theme is worship, as I already told you, celebration of people's faith. And we praise God for this Sunday worship. And uh, as we have already listened to the readings, the readings are from, the first reading is from Isaiah 6, 1 to 8. And the second reading is from Revelation 4, 1 to 11. And uh, the third reading comes from John's Gospel or the fourth Gospel, fourth chapter 16 to 26. And uh, we praise God for this theme, worship. 
At the outset, I would like to read John's Gospel, 4th chapter, verse 24. John's Gospel, 4th chapter, verse 24. I read it from the New Revised Standard Version. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Worship is a human response to God's grace. I repeat, worship is a human response to God's grace. Before I go into the meditation, because the theme is worship, I have a little humor which comes from a worship service. You know, there was a grandma who took her grandson who has not been to the church for a long time. He was 10 years old and he never attended worship service. And the grandma took him to the worship and after the worship, they were returning home and uh, grandma asked the little boy, how is it? And uh, the little boy said to the grandma, everything was okay except the commercials which was done by the pastor. Dear friends, even though it is a little bit of humor, it has a challenge, two challenges. One is, we need to take our children to the worship services, even from they are very young. And the second is, pastors don't preach it as a commercial. Don't preach it as a commercial. It comes to me. It comes to me as a challenge. With that, a little bit of introduction. Now we are going into the readings. First of all, the first reading from Isaiah 6, 1 to 8. We all know that great reading, great scriptural portion, Isaiah 6, which is a worship service, a heavenly worship again. And in that worship service, I have seen the basic ingredients of worship. What are all the basic ingredients of worship? Isaiah goes into the temple and the text goes like this. First of all, there is an adoration. Holy, holy, holy. There is an adoration. Let me read it from the text. Isaiah 6, uh, verse 3. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole year is full of his glory. And this is called uh, the adoration. So my dear friends, adoration is the first ingredient of worship. Secondly, confession of sins. Confession. There are two types of confessions I have already been telling you. One is personal, the other is corporate. Confession has two sides. One is personal and uh, both those uh, two sides are happening here. Isaiah says, I am unclean, the personal confession. And uh, you know what is the corporate confession? He again, once, once again he says, immediately he says, I live in a society of unclean people. My society is unclean, my Lord. Therefore, forgive us. First of all, forgive me. And secondly, forgive us. And immediately comes the absolution, my dear friend. The third ingredient, absolution. God absolves him with a burning coal. God touches Isaiah's tongue with a burning coal. And uh, that is how the absolution comes. And finally, in that particular uh, reading, there is a commissioning. There is a commissioning. Isaiah was saddened by the situation of his king's death. And uh, immediately 
God calls him. Who, whom shall I send them? And the response was, Here I am, send me Lord. Here I am, send me Lord. And that is the commissioning, my dear friends. We not only come in, but we also go out. We are, not in, we, we are not only invited into the church, but we are also sent out of the church. That is why in all our worship services, I normally tell, when you go out, you know what I, what, what I say to the people when they go out? Go out into the world with the power of the Holy Spirit to love the Lord and serve the people. Because worship and work must be one. Worship and work must be one. That is why we call it the service. Service and worship are together. Let me finish my first point for this reading from Isaiah 6, 1 to 8. We move on to the second point, having the theme, worship. And the second point comes from Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 to 11. Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 to 11. There also we see a heavenly worship, a heavenly worship. But I am so much pleased to see that it is not only the worship of the angels as we saw it in uh, Isaiah 6. Here, the whole of creation worship God. The whole of creation worship God. The nature also worships God. In verse 1, there is a very interesting uh, sentence in verse 1. After this, I looked and there in heaven a door stood open. A door stood open. And uh, when the door was opened, we, you can see the participants of that worship. 24 elders who symbolize the new Israel. And they all sing a new song. There are two choruses, of, of course, in this particular uh, uh, paragraph, there are uh, two choruses. The first one is in verse 8. I read that from the Bible. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and, and inside. Day and night without ceasing, they sing. And the chorus is, Holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. A great, great chorus, my dear friends. Sung by the 24 elders. And uh, there are living creatures. There are living creatures. You know, last Sunday, we had the same kind of theme from Ezekiel, first chapter. Four living creatures. What are all they? Who are all they? In verse 2, it says, The first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third living creature with a face like a human, and the fourth living creature like a flying eagle. What are they? Symbolize? They symbolize the whole of creation. They symbolize nature, human beings, and they all sing together. And there is one more chorus, my dear friends. What is the chorus? It is in 11th verse. You are worthy, our Lord God, to receive glory and honor and power. It goes on and on. So, the whole of creation praises God. This is what we read in 19th chapter of Psalms, or 19th Psalm, Psalm number, uh, verse number 1. I read it uh, for, uh, from Psalm 19, 1. It goes like this. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims His handiwork. So, my dear friends, it is not only the human beings who are worshipping God. The whole creation is worshipping. The whole nature is worshipping. This is what we read in uh, um, Psalm 24, 1. Psalm 104. There is a worship service by the whole of creation in Psalm 104. So, 
let me finish my second point. It is the whole of creation which worships God. Now let us go to the third point, dear friends. And the third reading comes from the fourth gospel. Normally I call it fourth gospel. And uh, fourth chapter verses 16 to 26. John's gospel, fourth chapter verses 16 to 26. There, as I read in the beginning, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. That is the basis for that particular text. Spirit and truth in worship. Spirit means emotion and truth means intellect. We are not supposed to sacrifice one for the sake of other. Many a time we sacrifice emotion for the sake of intellect and uh, sometimes we sacrifice intellect in the, uh, for the sake of emotion. In the free churches, we normally tell that they are most, uh, they, they, more, they are using emotion than intellect. You know what do, what do they say about us? About the established churches? We are very much bookish and we are very much intellect, uh, we are using intellect instead of emotion. There is no emotion at all. And that is the accusation that is leveled against the established churches. But our particular verse here says they both must go hand in hand, emotion and intellect. Worship should not become a ritualism. There must be consciousness. You might have heard me praying to God in our uh, opening prayers. Lord, please give us consciousness to worship you in spirit and in truth. In the churches, established the churches, we give more importance to ritualism. Sometimes the same thing happens in the, in the, in the independent churches as well. You know, in the name of speaking in tongues, that has become a ritual. Sometimes that becomes, that itself becomes a ritual. So, ritualism is a great uh, sin in the name of worship. I have written that ritualism is yet again a baalism. Therefore, let us be careful, my dear friends. And then there is one more thing in this particular text. The Samaritan woman asks Jesus, we worship here in the mountain of Gerizim. You worship there in Jerusalem. How is it? And immediately Jesus responds to her, My dear madam, it is not only in this mountain of Gerizim and not only in Jerusalem. The time is coming where, when people will, people will worship God everywhere. People will worship God everywhere. Places are not important. Buildings are not important. Everywhere God is worshipped. A boundary breaking worship I should say. A boundary breaking worship. And that is what we are learning from this particular text my dear friends. Therefore let me finish my third point that spirit and in truth are wonderfully should be intervened in worship. And uh, let me bring all the three points again once again. First of all, we were reading Isaiah 6, 1 to 8, the basic ingredients of worship. Adoration, confession, absolution, commissioning. And secondly, we were reading Revelation 4, 1 to 11, where we said, nature also worships God along with human beings. And thirdly, we were reading John's Gospel, 4th chapter, 16 to 26, where he said, 
spirit and truth in worship together and a boundary breaking worship needs to be appreciated may god bless all of us and make us to worship god meaningfully as a response to god's grace amen let us say the creed together mm. we shall follow the apostles creed i believe in god the father almighty maker of heaven and earth and in jesus christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified dead and buried he descended into hell the third day he rose again from the dead he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of god the father almighty from thence we shall come to judge the quick and the dead i believe in the holy spirit the holy catholic church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting amen, amen. today we will follow the words of the second litany where of each a petition your response would be lord have mercy for the peace of the whole world for the welfare of god's holy churches and for the union of all let us pray to the lord lord have mercy for our bishops and all other ministers especially our moderator and our bishop and the moderator of the church of north india and the metropolitan of the mount thoma church mm -hmm. and with a good heart and a pure conscience they may accomplish their ministry let us pray to the lord lord have mercy for the president of our republic the prime minister the governor of our state and the chief minister and all those who serve in the government let us pray to the lord lord have mercy for the sick the suffering the sorrowful and the dying let us pray to the lord lord have mercy for the poor the hungry orphans and widows and them that suffer persecution let us pray to the lord lord have mercy for ourselves and all who confess the name of christ that we may show forth the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light let us pray to the lord lord have mercy that with all his servants who have served him here and are now at rest we may enter into the fullness of his unending joy let us pray to the lord lord have mercy let us all join together in the lord's prayer together we pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen let us receive the benediction blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our god for ever and ever amen the peace of god with passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of god and of his son jesus christ our lord and the blessing of god almighty the father the son and the holy spirit be amongst you and remain with you always amen